Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello there and welcome to Growing Hope, where we are investing just a few minutes to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. I am Captain Lang and I am your faithful and faith-filled rainbows and lollipops host because I believe that when we look for the possibilities, the possibilities will show up. I not only believe the possibilities will show up, I expect them to show up. And I'm looking for them, and I'm actively working towards those possibilities. I want to live out my possibilities because I know that I am designed on purpose for a purpose. And that purpose is so much more than where I am right now. I also understand that my purpose will not come to me. It will not tackle me on the couch as I watch yet another marathon of Doctor Who. It will not wrestle me to the ground where I'm when I'm sitting there playing jewel on my phone. It will not come to me. I have to actively engage my life to begin living out all the possibilities that are waiting for me. I have to take my purposeful actions if I want to walk out my unique and purposeful life. Growing up boldness helps me to take the steps necessary to walk out those purposeful actions. The world is chaotic and noisy and full of distractions, and it's so easy to get knocked off target. I need to be bold, which is to say that I need to be fearless and daring and more than just a little bit courageous, or I will end up hesitating amidst all that noise and chaos. When I invest in growing up boldness for my journey, then I create the elements that will allow me to exceed the ordinary rules. And I like exceeding the ordinary rules. <laughs> Most of my life, I found ways to exceed the rules without breaking any of them, of course. I had a teacher who told me that I annoyed the administration so much because I knew how to bend the rules and work the rules for my benefit without breaking those rules so that I did a lot but never enough to land in actual trouble. I think it's important to remind myself of things like this, of how I was able to bend without breaking the rules. Because it allows me to remember who I was and what I did. Because we forget. At least I forget. I'm not living in the same environment that I lived in back then. I have different responsibilities and different demands on my time and my resources. I forget what I managed to accomplish and what I managed to get done. This is one of the main reasons I think that journals can be such a powerful tool for growing up this purposeful life. I can review where I've been and I can remember some of my superpowers that I, that I may have forgotten or that I may have allowed to rust with inactivity. And I'm discovering that rule exceeding ability, once again, with the encouragement and support of some new found friends, yes, that would be you, Karen, and the challenges that come from the Morning Mindset Cafe and from my son and his friends and from the rekindled belief that I can do whatever I set my mind to do if I will just do it. I was talking with Karen the other day and I remember telling her that I always knew that if I could get an interview for a job that I would walk away with a job offer. I went into the interview expecting a job offer and I always came away with the opportunity to pursue that path. I expected it. 
But I did have to be persistent and consistent in sending out the resumes that would lend me that interview and any interview opportunities. I had to be consistent and persistent in stepping through the open doors that I found and sometimes in kicking open a few. Sometimes along the way, somewhere along the way, I lost my focus. If I want to break through the walls and launch into my impossible dreams, then I will have to rediscover the focus that will allow me to be persistent and consistent in that next step. Because the next step will be a little bit easier because the momentum is behind it. But I'll have to keep taking that step if I want to continue building that momentum. I will keep the momentum going only by consistent pursuit of my purpose. More of the same old, same old to get me to my dreams. It is not a one-step journey. I need to double down on the next step so that I can develop a persistent pushing that will break through the resistance that will eventually come. And I have to take, do one more thing that will get me one step closer and will also create a habit of doing that will increase my consistent and persistent attitude. And finally, I have to be expecting a next step because no matter where I am in the journey, there will be a next step or I should be expecting it. This can be the most important key to unlocking the consistent and persistent habits that will keep me going because I can, I will, I am. Am. There will always be an excuse to hold me back. There will usually be a very good reason to keep me from moving on. I have to become so focused, so consistent, and so persistent that nothing will turn my eyes from the prize of my dreams. When I build up these habits of keeping on and keeping on and stepping on and stepping on, then I will be in a position to reach the goals that I desire. But it's a persistent thing. It's a consistent thing. And these are not always the popular thing. We are told that we should expect others to do for us. But the truth is the only person that can reach my dreams is staring back at me from the mirror every single day. And I have to be willing to move. Living out a bold and purposeful life will take some effort and it will require that the efforts be invested over time. That would mean that I need to be consistent and persistent to make it happen. But it will happen if I will walk it out. Growing Hope needs to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to share some more thoughts on this whole path of consistent and persistent. Growing Hope will be right back. This is your Growing Hope Scripture Focus. Each week, I'll share a favorite Bible verse and challenge you to memorize and study that verse over the next seven days. By putting the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds with consistency, those words will settle in and begin to grow fruit that shows forth in our own words and in our actions. This week's verse is Romans 6, 14 and 15. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. See, I've messed up before, and I know that God forgives all of my mess-ups when I confess, repent, and choose to do better. God always forgives me. And sometimes I choose not to do what I know to do because I know that He will forgive me. But I have to recognize that forgiveness is not what it's all about. Anytime I choose anything other than God, I choose something less than what God has for my life. I might be in a position to receive forgiveness, but I'm also in a position that pulls me away from His blessing. Like all things, I can choose God or I can choose self. This has been your Growing Hope Scripture Focus. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. There will always be an excuse. There will always be a reason not to keep going. There will always be something that tries to hinder my journey. In truth, the only thing that gets in the way of the journey looks back at me from the mirror every day. I am the only person, the only thing, that can hinder my success. 
Place and Purpose is a book that offers my own experiences with discovering that unique path and uncovering the truth that they don't hold the answers to my journey. I break it down to four simple questions. Why, what, how, and when. When you answer these questions for yourself, then you will be closer to that unique place designed just for you. Here are some of the things that are being shared about place and purpose. Catherine shares many ways that you can get closer to God and begin to identify that missing part of your life. Place and Purpose offers practical tips for digging into a personal relationship with God so that I can recognize His purpose for my life. Catherine Lang has filled this book with wonderful advice for beginners, but also practical advice for the seasoned believer. Get your copy of Place and Purpose by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books and begin to answer the why, what, how, and when of your journey. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to Growing Hope, where we are growing up bold and purposeful lives by developing consistent and persistent behaviors. I am Catherine Lang, and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because I am going to need some of that myself to get through this talk of consistency and persistence. Being consistent and persistent, even just saying the words, have never been my favorite place to go. I'd always thought that I had a closer relationship with procrastination than anything else until I started reviewing my life. The more I talked about what I did in my past and how I acted in my past, the more I realized that being consistent and especially being persistent had provided many opportunities for my life and more than a little fun and joy along the way. My husband and I found the perfect plot of land and set out to create a plan for our home. Now, we found a home that we liked that was for sale to be moved, and I approached the moving company that owned it. The owner told me that the house had been promised to someone else, but if the sale fell through, then he would let me know. Well, I called him every day, twice a day, for two full weeks until he finally gave in and told me that we could have the house. Persistency was the key to our having the home that we desired. I have let procrastination convince me that I am better at putting things off than I am at getting things done. I determined last week to break up with procrastination. And these little walks down memory lane are not only pushing me past procrastination, but they're bringing me back into alignment with the persistent and consistent behavior that served me so well most of my life. Being consistent and persistent in that next step of my bold pursuit is the only way I will reach the end goal. I have to keep going if I want to arrive. The next step will be a little easier, and that's a good thing. Because the next step is going to have the momentum of that first step behind it. And momentum can do a lot for staying persistent and growing consistency. Now, the first year I had my garden, I did all of the work by hand. I ordered a tractor trailer full of mulch, and that's a lot of mulch. And I used my garden wagon to haul that mulch all around the yard. All of it. I found that getting a wagon full of mulch going was not easy because of the weight. And the weight wanted to hold me back. But once I got the wagon going, it was a little easier because I had that momentum helping me. I also discovered the more times I filled the wagon, the tougher that first step became. My mind would start telling me all the reasons I should leave the wagon and go into the air-conditioned house. It was sheer will, that fundamental persistence I told you I had lived out for so long, that drove me to build back up the momentum to get the job done. It is true what they say, that where there is a will, there is a way if I will do it. Then I will find a way to get it done. I have to be persistent and consistent in that next step because I have to keep the momentum going. I may not always want to do it, but if I do it, then I will be in a better position for that next time around. 
Several years ago, I determined that I wanted a more natural way of keeping our pool crystal blue. I did some research and I found out I could eliminate a lot of the chemicals by following a simple plan. A week later, I was looking at a mucky mess. So I did some more research and I discovered that I needed to be consistent in testing the pool to be able to reach the right balance. So every day for the next week, I tested the water every two hours while the sun was up. The consistency of testing and adjusting left me with a crystal blue pool. Now, I know how to get there, and it's easier to accomplish and maintain, but I had to be diligent in that consistency first. The next step can be a challenge sometimes, particularly when there has been some level of success. See, I need to double down on the focus for that next step if I'm going to build the persistence. I will need to push through the inevitable resistance that will show up or that call of procrastination that comes just a little too loud to ignore despite my demands that we are no longer a couple. (laughs) I will sometimes need to double down on that next step by being even more persistent and determined than I was with my first step. And that can happen When I make the investment of one more thing to drive that next step home, just one more thing, it can be something big or it can be something very small. But by choosing to do one more thing, I quiet the call of procrastination and I dull the chaotic noise of the world. One of the most important ways to maintain my consistent and persistent focus is to expect there to be a next step. No matter how many steps I've already taken, there is, should be an expectation of a next step. If I start looking for the next break or the next lull, then I may end up lulling myself into the trap of not doing. I learned this lesson best with my garden. No matter how much time I spend in the garden, I have to keep spending time in my garden to keep things maintained. I learned it yet again when we put in a pool because if I don't keep investing in the care and maintenance of the pool, it will revert back to that mucky mess that nobody can enjoy. My bold and purposeful life happens intentionally. It happens when I find the consistent and persistent focus to keep taking that, that next step. It will never accidentally come upon me. It will never forcefully come upon me. I have to be in pursuit of my bold and purposeful life if I want to live out my bold and purposeful life. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to live out my bold and purposeful life. I am no longer comfortable settled. I'm no longer happy just going along, just getting along, just being who I've always been because I am meant to be so much more. I'm ready to break out. I'm ready to break through. I'm ready to take off because I am designed to fly. I take that first step, but then I need to take that next step. It's only when I put one foot in front of the other over and over again that I will make it to where I want to go. When I invest in building consistent and persistent habits, then I fuel my ability to take that next step. Growing Hope needs to take one more break, but when we come back, I'm going to share some foundational thoughts for building consistent and persistent focus on that next step. This is the Growing Hope Review. Each week I'll share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, or movies, and I'll tell you why it moved me to share. Although I know we each get something different out of the things that we encounter, I also know that when we are moved by words, others are likely to be moved as well. This week's review is on the book, In His Steps. For me, it's one of those books that needs to be read over and over again because you experience the revelation anew each time through. In His Steps... 
is was written by Charles Sheldon and was first published in 1896 as a newspaper serial that challenged readers to go beyond the ordinary and the expected into something more. It started the whole What Would Jesus Do movement and has become one of the best-selling books of all times. The plot follows ordinary people, businessmen, society women, and those on the edge of stardom and what happens when they take the pledge to not make any decisions without first asking what would Jesus do for an entire year. In his steps is roughly 233 pages, so read as a group and study the challenges that the individuals faced. Read alone and take your own What Would Jesus Do challenge, but no matter how you read it, In His Steps is more than worth the investment. This has been the Growing Hope Review. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. There will always be an excuse. There will always be a reason not to keep going. There will always be something that tries to hinder my journey. In truth, the only thing that gets in the way of the journey looks back at me from the mirror every day. I am the only person, the only thing, that can hinder my success. Place and Purpose is a book that offers my own experiences with discovering that unique path and uncovering the truth that they don't hold the answers to my journey. I break it down to four simple questions. Why, what, how, and when. When you answer these questions for yourself, then you will be closer to that unique place designed just for you. Here are some of the things that are being shared about Place and Purpose. Catherine shares many ways that you can get closer to God and begin to identify that missing part of your life. Place and Purpose offers practical tips for digging into a personal relationship with God so that I can recognize His purpose for my life. Catherine Lang has filled this book with wonderful advice for beginners, but also practical advice for the seasoned believer. Get your copy of Place and Purpose by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books and begin to answer the why, what, how, and when of your journey. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to the final segment of Growing Hope, where we are learning the power of of consistent and persistent habits for driving me on to that next step. I am still Catherine Lang, and I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because a consistent and persistent diet of hope and encouragement will allow us all to fly. I have it in me to be persistent and consistent in my pursuit of purpose. My past proves that I have it in me. For some reason, I gave procrastination a lot of power in my life. Even speaking about how much procrastination managed to drive my actions, or more my inactions. I mentioned the Ask, Seek, Knock scripture recently when talking about taking that first step. But it is also a great reminder about being persistent in what you're doing. Luke 11, 9 through 10 reads like this. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Jesus goes on to explain more about persistence in Luke 18, 1-8. Now, this is the story of the persistent widow. She approached a judge and asked for him to take rule or, ma- or make a rule in her favor. But the judge ignored her. The widow came back to him again, asking him to rule in her favor. But again, the judge ignored her. This continued. She continued to come back until finally the judge was so tired of her asking that he decided to rule in her favor just so she would stop coming to him. Her justice came because of her persistence. She would not stop. If I'm willing to keep on keeping on, then most of the time I will get an answer. And most of the time the answer will be in my favor because my persistent diligence is in pursuing my purpose of God's design. Jacob's story is another great one for the value of persistence. In Genesis 32, we find Jacob alone in the wilderness because he sent all that he has ahead of him, his family, his possessions, in an attempt to appease his brother Esau. 
Now, while he's alone, he begins to wrestle with a man. And Jacob wrestled with that man all night long. At daybreak, the man realized that he was not going to win, and he touched Jacob's hip, and the thigh came out of joint. But Jacob continued to wrestle the man anyway. Jacob was persistent, even though he had to be in some serious pain. The man asked Jacob to let him go, and Jacob said, only if you will bless me. So the man gave Jacob the name Israel and said, It was because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Because of his persistence, Jacob became Israel. The more I think about it, the more I realize the scripture is filled with stories of persistent and consistent behavior. Noah built the ark for 120 years before the floods came and God's prophecy was fulfilled. Abraham walked in faith for about 25 years before the promise God gave him was fulfilled in the birth of Isaac. Jacob served his father-in-law with consistent actions and persistent determination so he would be able to marry his love, Rachel. David's anointing by Samuel to be the next king happened probably around when he was 12, some say 25. And then he was consistent in his loyalty to God and persistent in, in his faith for God and God's directions for the next, you know, depending on who says it, decades. All the time, Saul was trying to kill him. And, and David finally got to take the throne when he was 30 years old. I complain when I invest a week and all the dreams have not yet been fulfilled. <laughs> Jesus had the consistent habit of making time to be alone in prayer. In Mark one thirty five, it shared that Jesus went up before daybreak. That is, while it's still dark now, and he would go to an isolated place and pray or talk with God. He Jesus then goes on to share the secret for powerful faith in Mark 9, 29. And he says this only comes from consistent and persistent prayer and fasting. Consistency and persistence are powerful weapons for walking out a bold life. They give me the strength to take me to that next step. And each step makes it possible for me to move a little closer to that place that I know that I'm designed to be. I have to keep stepping if I'm going to move into where I know I'm supposed to be. Thank you so much for joining me on this next step to living a bold and purposeful life. Sharing with you is one of the ways that I am growing up the consistent and persistent behaviors that will let me break through and get through the obstacles the world tries to put up. I would love to hear about your journey. Please email me your thoughts, your successes, or, or your questions at radio at katherinelang.com. You can also find me all around the internet at Catherine C. Lang. Um, on Facebook, I'm the Catherine C. Lang. On Twitter, it's at Catherine C. Lang. And on YouTube, it's the Catherine C. Lang. Listen to all the archived radio shows and podcast at katherinelang.com forward slash on dash air. You can also check in with me over at the website. The website's katherinelang.com. You can find all of the ebooks and you can sign up for the newsletter. I send it out once a week. It's the Reflections and Hope column. I am Catherine Lang, your Rainbows and Lollipops host, because every day holds a promise of more and every action contains the power of possibility. It's not about what the world says or even what the world shows. The strength of hope and encouragement will and does push through the limits and the walls of the world. My prayer is and always will be that the words I share are helping establish foundations of hope that will shatter the delusions of the world. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Katherine Lang. Catherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your Hope Smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Catherine's website at www.catherinelang.com. That's www.k-a-t-h-r-y-n-l-a-n-g.com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at 
If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.katherinelang.com slash reflections. And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.